Welcome back to Huckleberries. Today we're doing a trunk show and some tips and tricks on collage. So these are the Laura Heim collage patterns and we've got some great samples to show you today. So we're going to start with the perfect form and this one was done by Carol and this one is soft like a regular quilt. She did binding and then just a hanging sleeve. And you can see she's done a beautiful job. Okay, then we're moving on to the tiny patterns. As you can see, some of Laura's patterns are quite large, but she's come out with groupings that you get in one package. You get all three patterns and you've got the octopus, sea turtle, and the mermaid. And these are on a frame. So another possible way of displaying them. And you can see all the little Easter eggs in there, we call it when you've got bunnies and butterflies and things that normally wouldn't be in the ocean. <laughs> It just, it's fun. Okay, then we've got NOLA, which was just completed by our wonderful own Joanne. And she has also hard framed this one. And it's fun to see the differences in fabric, like Joanne chose a single color palette and it's stunning. And then Joanne's Fox. And again, this is hard framed. And she had fun hiding little foxes in there. And again, there's little birds, little butterflies. And we're on to the, it's called Fauna, which is the little camper. And you can just see how much fun you can have with your prints. And it's definitely a case of more is more. You can have lots of fun adding. Linda did little signs. Lots of fun details, small prints, big prints, animals. A little airplane. Then we've got Abilene, and this is a slightly different style, more of like strip. And Laura's done a couple like this. Another really fun one to do, a completely different method. And you notice some of these have a piece background, some of them, most of these are a solid background, but it's up to you. You make it your own. Then Old Blue. I also did this one. And that was the first one, actually. Saw this in Houston. And this one is a piece background and soft mounted. And again, there's lots of little things hidden in here. There's little turtles. It was fun to add some lettering. And this one you can see has bigger pieces in the background and then collaged on top. So the actual truck is bigger pieces of fabric, unlike some of the other patterns. And then Caleb, 
the amazing camel. This was done by one of our customers, Lynn. Many of you know her. And Lynn just did a beautiful, beautiful job on them. So this one you can see she did more larger pieces of fabric. The eye. That's the fun of choosing your prints. She really did an awesome job on that. She kindly loaned it to us for today. Now we have many patterns by Laura. The newest one is Tide, the whale. Jack. So some are seasonal, some not. Black cat. For all our shoe people out there, I love a good pair of shoes myself. We have pink pump. Now the mermaid was a large pattern called Siren. So it's nice that she is available as a tiny pattern or in the large. She's slightly different. Special delivery. Avatrix. Oh dear. Vino. I like a little Vino. <laughs> Potpourri. Jellyfish. White Buffalo. Let it snow. Sorry, I got my fingers on it. Now this is an example of another one that's strip piecing. That's the Guardian. The turtle also in a larger pattern. He's called Seawell. Pinkerton. Actually one of our students did that and did a beautiful job. And Scarlet. And then I'll grab some of the tiny patterns for you to see. So we have more than just the one that you saw there. This is called group one. I think this is a really fun one. This is group five. And group two. So we really have all of those done in the large. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm gonna do here I just want to show you a few tri just a few tips. Uh, we do have Laura's little book of collage and she has lots of tips in here in addition to what's in the patterns. So with the larger ones like Caleb, the truck, you will trace the pattern onto pattern ease. So we do have that here by the bolt. It is an interfacing and you trace the pattern onto here and then that allows you to start building. Then you will cut it out and apply it to your background. The tiny patterns are done just slightly different and I have one open here. These you can see are smaller. So these I actually build this onto a Teflon sheet. So we have the Teflon sheets here and you would build it on the Teflon sheet and then you put it onto the background. Now what I highly recommend is for your TV watching <laughs> is to actually start collecting Lots and lots of prints. So I I've got to plug in that iron just so you yep, know. <laughs> I've got, I feel the warmth. I've got turtles. 
You can recognize some of these flowers were from the truck. So what I did is I went ahead and put steam a seam on and I cut out a whole bunch of motifs before I even started. So when you're watching TV, you can just be cutting out lots of flowers. You want large, small, I have all kinds of different sizes and motifs. And I just went ahead and cut them out when I was watching TV, then I could start building. Now in the pattern, she does recommend doing fat quarters. Um, I didn't do that unless I really, really like to print. So I'm gonna just take this here. Now she recommends, and I also recommend the Karen K Buckley scissors. They have a nice serrated edge and they are just beautiful for cutting these out. And yes, I do have several sizes and I found that really handy with the prints. So when I have something like this, if I'm not gonna use a lot of it, I just cut a little piece. I roll out my steam seam, fold it back. And then I just did a small section if I wasn't gonna use this flower a lot. So I can always do more. And as you know, you're gonna use a fair amount of steam seam. So I hand pressed it. Then I just went ahead and cut this chunk out. My apologies for the rustle, rustle. You can he even hear those scissors working. So I just cut that out. And you can keep your paper to protect your iron because if you've missed any edges there, you're gonna gum up your iron. So I just give this a press. The beauty of steam seam is it made, it's made to be pressed more than once. So now, see that stuck. So I protected my iron because I must have missed a little edge. And then I just start cutting out my flower. So you want to do this, like I say, when you're watching TV, because you'll want lots of these. And the steam seam will stick if you don't iron yeah. it too. Yeah, it will stick if you don't iron it, but it will still stick even though you did press it. And then I do recommend peeling this. It's still a bit warm. I do recommend peeling this off and sticking it. So this is still sticky. You can hear it. Hmm. So that is still sticky. And the reason I say to peel it is because you can understand when you're doing a bunch of these, if you forgot to peel this, you could go ahead and iron. And then actually here, it's better. These are layered. So I don't want to have this one stick. This one stick and this one's not sticking because I left my paper underneath it. So it's good to just go ahead, peel them, stick them on, and you can change your mind, but I would definitely peel it. And any leftover paper, if I end up not using this, I can just go ahead and set that on my leftover paper and keep it for my next project. So, and I do have a nice little baggie here with my leftovers from other projects. So I do hang on to them. And you can see like some of the, this is all ready to go. I would just trim it a bit more. I ended up not using it, but I definitely keep this in my little pile. Now, when you are doing what she calls underlays and you need to trace, sorry, I'm wrestling. So say I want to trace this eye. I'm peeling this back. So I'm peeling my steam seam back and I'm going to trace I do suggest having a few writing instruments. I've got a pencil, a pen, because what'll happen is sometimes when you trace this, put this back and glue it on the fabric. I have had instances where this got absorbed into the fabric. So sometimes I play and see what works best. Usually my mechanical pencil's good, but I have used a Sharpie and I have used a pen. So you will read this in the pattern. 
so I'm not going to spend too, too long on that. So the next tip I have for you is just going to be quilting. So you may have noticed when Joanne went around, the truck was done in a grid. And there's a lot of steam seam. So we do have the non-stick needles. These work really well. I also found the titanium needles worked really well. Uh, Lynn on her Caleb here. She has not, she's just done a little bit of stitching around the edges. Just some nice raw edge applique and quilted the background. This is also beautiful. And on Carol's, she actually chose to not quilt on the dress form itself. The seam -a seam is definitely going to hold it in place. She's done a beautiful job on the quilting in the background, but it's up to you how much you want to quilt or not. So you can really make these your own. And I do recommend, you don't have to, but I do like having several sizes of scissors. I did find when I got to some of the really, really tiny stuff, cutting it out, that the really small hankles were a really good size to have. Not absolutely necessary. You can certainly use, that's another great tiny pair when you want to get in and do the really fine details. She does recommend steam seam too. And I do, it's repositionable. So that is going to be really important, like say with our little flower, just changing your mind, moving them around. They will continue to stick until you iron them that second time. So I wouldn't suggest substituting other products. And that's what I have for you today. Hmm. Thank you for joining us and can't wait to help you pick out a pattern and get working on your own collage. Thanks, Carrie.